أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحمل الله فلا مدل له ومن يدل فلا هدي له فأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله غيب السماوات والأرض وما أمر الساعة إلا كلامه المصاري أو أكذاب إن الله على كل شيء قدير ولا هو أكرجكم من بطول أمهاتكم لا تعلمون شيئا وجعل لكم السمع والأبصار والأفداء لعلكم تشكون Salakallah alayhi wa sallam Surely Allah speaks the truth My dear brothers and sisters in Islam I greet you with the greeting that the angels gave our beloved Prophet on his mirage Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Alhamdulillah All praise is due to Allah before I begin, I would like to thank this masjid and the governing bodies for inviting me to speak. Uh, this place has a special place in my heart uh, for its history and its courage and its strength. And I thank all of you. As I said, surely all praise belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His help, we ask His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our deeds and from the evils of our own selves. Whomever Allah guides, none can lead astray. And whomever he leads astray, none can guide. 
I openly declare and bear witness that there is no God and no Allah except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is alone without partner. And I openly declare and bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. May Allah bless him <coughs> and grant him peace along with his family and his companions. O oh, you who believe, have taqwa for Allah as you should have taqwa for him, and do not die except that you die as a Muslim. My dear brothers and sisters, I read a, two verses from Surah al -Nah, the bees, verses 77 and 78. And we know that the bee is one of Allah's greatest creations because the bee is part of our risk. We know that the rain that Allah sends down on the earth helps to grow flowers and plants and fruits and vegetables and grains that we eat in order to live. And it is the bee that pollinates all of these plants. So he is a very, very integral part of our existence and our survival. Allah says in these two verses, he says, to Allah belongs the mystery of the heavens and the earth. And the decision of the hour is as the twinkling of an eye or even quicker. For Allah has power over all things. It is he who brought you forth from the wombs of your mothers when you knew nothing. And he gave you hearing and sight and intelligence and affection that you may give thanks to him. These two verses talks about the gifts that Allah has given us. In particular, I wanted to focus and concentrate on the last part of the second verse where he says, which is hearing, samia, and absara, basir, sight, and Afida. Afida. Our dear brother uh, Yusuf Ali translates this as intelligence and affection. But Fa'ida is the heart. It is the heart. This is the, and the, the reason he translates this, translates it this way is that this is the place where intelligence and affection is. It resides within the heart. Heart is the center of intelligence and affection. Scientists have discovered that the heart, the human heart, has neurons in it, just like the brain. And I've discovered that the things we learned so many years ago in our elementary schools and in our junior highs and in our high schools were not exactly correct. It is the heart that runs things, not the brain. It is the heart that gives the signals to the brain, and the brain gives the signals to the body. Now, our prophet has said, there's a piece of flesh in the body. If it is whole or sound or good, then the whole body is whole and sound and good. But if that piece of flesh is bad or spoiled or rotten, then the whole body is bad and spoiled or rotten. This is the legacy of the heart. The heart is an amazing creation of Allah. I got some statistics here that I wanted to share with you. It says the physical heart houses the spiritual heart. It beats 100,000 times a day. Our heart, your heart, my heart beats 100,000 times a day without stop. It pumps two gallons of blood a minute. That's over 100 gallons of blood every hour. This is what this thing does. And it don't take a break. It don't, it don't rest. It don't stop or rest. When it does, we know what happens. <laughs> the human vascular system is over 600,000 miles long. All our veins and arteries and capillaries, if they took them and stretched them and put them together, it would wrap around the earth two times, each one of us. This is an amazing sign from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. This is just some of the some of the statistics of the human heart. But the heart I want to talk about is the other heart. 
the heart, our hearts have three aspects, and they're mentioned in Quran. <coughs> when Allah says, Alladina yuaswi sufi suduhin nas, we know this from Surah the Nas. You know, Shaitan whispers into the heart. He whispers into the sudur, and the sudur is the little niche or area that the heart sits in. If you, uh, if, I, mean, I don't know how many of you have seen these anatomical drawings, or even they got the 3D models now where you can just see the lungs and the heart right there, you can take it right out. And there's a little, like a little convex micron, like the, where the heart sits right in. <coughs> this is the sudur. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in a, in a hadith that if it wasn't for the fact that the shaitan whispers into the sudur all the time, we would be closer to the angels. But that's where he is. Shaitan is there whispering to, and the whispering to our nets. <coughs> that's the first aspect of ours. And the second aspect is the kalb. He mentions it in the Quran. The kalb is the actual heart. But we're talking about the spiritual portion of that heart. It is, uh, he says, in the Mubin, and a heart brought turned in devotion. The word kalaba, which is the word called, comes from, it means to turn or to change. I mean, how many of us have had a change of heart? Huh? I'll put my hand up. <laughs> or we did do one thing and they said, no, I don't want to do that, I'll do it another way. That's, that's that call of doing that. And uh, Allah changes hearts. He's the one that makes Muslims. We are all blessed and fortunate to have Allah as our Lord and has brought us into Al Islam. We are all blessed. And that's the second aspect of the heart. And the last aspect, the third aspect, is the fa'adah. The fa'adah. So did Allah convey inspiration to his servant what he meant to convey and the, and the heart in the way falsified what he said. This is the fa'ada. This fa'ada is what we call the heart of hearts. This is where all of our emotions, feelings reside. And the heart is a sentient being. It is a sentient creation, which means it's affected by external stimuli. Now, uh, unless you're just cold-hearted, then you're not affected by stimuli. But most of us are warm-hearted. We're warm-blooded animals. The heart is affected by external uh, stimuli. Whether the stimuli is good or bad, it's a, it affects the heart. If somebody says something to you that you don't like, you're going to be affected. If someone says something to you that you do like, you're going to be affected in a positive way or in a negative way. These three aspects all work together for the heart. Allah says in Surah Al-Shams, and that first surah that I read talks about being grateful so that we may show gratitude to Allah. This is what we should be doing, showing gratitude to Allah for the heart that he gave us, along with the, all the other things. But the heart is so important. The heart is so important. In Shura Sam, man, I love this sham. This is the sun. So when that scene when man saw her, what el man man by the soul, the nafs. That's one of the definitions of the soul. We call the nafs a soul. It could be our self, it could be our ego. There are many overlapping uh, definitions and descriptions that all meld to help guide us and educate us. It says, by the soul and how it is fashioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is musawir. The word he uses is sawah. Allah is a fashioner. He fashions everything, including us. Then he says, as to and its enlightenment as to its wrong and its right. So the soul or the heart can go either wrong 
or it can go either way. As the prophet said about a, a good heart, you got a good body. A bad heart, you're gonna have a bad body. And that doesn't I mean, that mean that the body is bad. It'll make bad choices. It'll make bad choices. He who succeeds purifies it, and he that fails corrupts it. These are such a beautiful few verses. And I have been noticing it says that the place that houses the heart is corrupt. What's going to be the effect on the soul, the heart, or where our soul lives? If the place that houses the soul is purified, what's going to be the effect on the soul? It's going to be nice. As I said before, the heart is affected by external stimuli. And we as individuals, especially as Muslims, we have some modicum of control over where we place our heart, what kind of situation we put our heart in, ourselves in. We have control of that. Allah gave us that. He gave us the ability to choose, right or wrong, hot, cold. If it's too cold, we turn the heat up. We don't want to catch the bus, we go get in our car, all right. We have the ability to make these choices. This is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sentient and emotional capability of receiving and being readily affected by external stimuli, impressionable, susceptible, receptive. These are just definitions of sentient. We are all sentient beings. As a consequence, we should struggle and strive to expose our hearts, expose ourselves to that which is best. Now we know that Ramadan is coming soon. This is, I think, is the fourth or fifth day of the month of Shabbat. And I often try to get us to learn more about the months that Allah gave us. Not January, February, March, April, the months that he gave us. Because there is meaning and there is great benefit in knowing what's going on in these months. The month of Shabbat is the month just before Ramadan. And we all know that in Ramadan, we all get happy too, because the shaitan is locked up in the month of Ramadan. We know this. Guess who else knows it? Shaitan knows it too. <laughs> he knows it too. So what does he do in the month of Shaban? He bringing it. <laughs> he is bringing it. So be ready. Be ready for some fitna. And don't let this fitna throw you off your square, as we say, or take you out of your box. Deal with it with some islam. Deal with it with some patience, some understanding, some halim, some forbearance. And understand that you know where it's coming from, and you know why it's coming. Don't let it take you out. And alhamdulillah, uh, I, don't, I can only speak for myself, but he's, he's been, he started last week on me. <laughs> and it, it's, it'll occur anywhere, especially in your home. That's where he's going to jump in first. You know, he's the shaitan. He's you know, he got his army out there working. He'll say, and when they go meet, he had a little meeting, he'll say, uh, yeah, uh, brother, brother devil, what did you do today? Oh, man, I made somebody steal some money. Oh, okay. What about you, brother uh, devil over there? What did you do? Man, I broke up a wife and a husband. Oh, come on over here and sit down next to me. This is one of his greatest achievements, is to separate us. Whether we're husband and wife, whether we're brother to brother, whether we're uh, cousin or uncle or whatever, to separate us and divide us. That way it makes his job a little easier. And we know what his job is. He wants us to go to the fire with him. Guard our hearts. Guard our hearts. Akhala kuli hada. Wa astaghfirullah khali wa alaykum. I say this and ask Allah's forgiveness for me and for you. I mean. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم 
وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين آمنوا وتطمئنوا قلوبهم بذكر الله ألا ذكر الله تطمئن القلوب الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات يتوبا لهم وخصوا ما آب صدق الله الذي يجري الله speaks the truth My dear brothers and sisters I just read you two verses that were in Surah Sur- Sur- Ra'ad Thunder Allah created thunder and lightning this he says, those who believe, the Aladina Amno. Yeah, here Allah said, Yeah, you have the Amno. Oh, you who believe, the Sahaba said, hey, perk up. Listen carefully because Allah is getting ready to say something very, very important. He says, those who believe and whose heart finds satisfaction in the remembrance of Allah, for without doubt, in the remembrance of Allah, do hearts find satisfaction. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said the same thing twice in two different ways, stressing the importance and the power of remembering him. He said, for those who believe and work righteous deeds, aminu salihati, aladina amanu, who believe, who are amanu, iman, and aminu, who do, who work, Amal are our deeds. Salihati, those things that are good and righteous, is what? Tuba lahum wa husnu ma'ab. Blessedness and a beautiful place of final return. So we know that the shaitan is attacking our hearts today. Right now, as I stand here and talk, he's after me. He's after you as well. And Allah tells us the best way we can get him, get him, get him off us is to remember Allah. The heart that is satisfied with the remembrance of Allah is a heart that is healthy, sound, good, cleanses the passions, it obeys Allah and His Messenger. It enjoins the good, forbids the evil, and so on and so on. That's the heart that does all these things. The heart that with a defect is the heart that is sick. It knows a lot, but it is too weak to completely overcome its passions and its desires. It exists in a state of flux, serving two masters. What the old book used to say, you can't serve two masters because you love one and hate the other. You're always in a state of flux. You're always in a state of flux. Allah says in uh, Surah Al-Baqarah, he talks about the heart that is diseased. We have to fight these diseases of the heart because when we have a disease in our heart, our body becomes diseased as well. We suffer. And then he talks about the heart that is dead it doesn't know Allah. It stands against His command. It stands with its desires and lusts. If it worships, it <coughs> worships things that are other than Allah, said this mushrik. Avoid our ideas. Now, I just wanted to touch on some of the poisons of the heart and how we can be aware of them and try to guard against them. When I first read this, I was rather surprised. You think of poisons, you think of certain kind of things. But number one on the list is talking. Wallahi. Talking. Allah said, He has a sentinel on the right and a sentinel on the left. Two angels, right and left. They write down everything we say and do. 
They don't miss a beat. They don't miss a syllable, a vowel. They write it all down. Utterances are things which Allah will not will hold us accountable. Every word we say, will, we will be held accountable. Sometimes we say some bad stuff. And I'm talking about me. I'm talking about myself. Sometimes we say some things that we shouldn't be saying. And it's important to recognize that when we do this, we ask Allah's forgiveness and make a couple of rock eyes. That's tawbah. That's repentance. Talking. There's all kinds of wrong talking. Backbiting. Slander, lying, obscene, false talk, riyah, bickering. They all come under the heading of lahwa. Lahwa. Useless talk. Talk that has no benefit. I mean, I get with a bunch of brothers, and sometimes we talk about LeBron James and the basketball thing. But what benefit does that have for us? Other than it's, it's good for our little male ego, and we talk about that. It does, if we're not talking about Allah, if we're not talking about the Quran, or his messenger, or his righteous servants, and I, and I got a thing here that's, uh, that's coming up uh, May 5th, talking about the influence of Imam W.D. Muhammad. And the speaker is supposed to be Imam Daryl Kareem. I would love to meet that brother. I've, I've read his articles in the paper for over many years. Yes, yes. So, watch what we say. We talk too much. We really do. We talk too much. Be aware. The prophet said, the faith of a servant is not rectified until his heart is rectified, and his heart is not rectified until his tongue is rectified. He's also said, on the day of judgment, human beings will curse two things, what is between their jaws and what is between their legs. They're going to curse them because those are the things they're going to send them to the fire. Second, the glance. Now we got talking, then we got the glance, we got the tongue and the words, now we got what we're looking at. We look at some crazy stuff. I'm talking about me. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we all got these, these cell phones, right? And you be on your cell phone and all of a sudden something will just jump up. Come on, where did, where did this come from? <laughs> this is obscene. <laughs> And this lets me know what some cell phones are about. If we don't control them, somebody else or something else controls the cell phones. The glance. It sets up the heart for corruption and sickness, causing darkness. The glance sets up. The prophet said, yeah, you look at a sister, she looks good. Said, yeah, look one time. Don't go staring, following her around. You know what you're setting yourself up for. Control the glance. The Quran says lower your gaze. Lower your gaze. It's going to be out there. Monitor what you watch on the social media, on the TV. Monitor what you watch. Like I said, the heart is a sentient being. Allah just said, I gave you ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to feel. Whatever that external stimuli is, is going to affect you. It's going to affect you, and this is this is our this is our, uh, our armor, this is our artillery, this is knowledge. So when it comes, we know what to do. Turn away from it, turn it off, pray it away, zikr it away. Number three, I'm telling you, these four these four poisons of the heart trip me out. Number three is food. Now I don't know anybody who don't like to eat. <laughs> I mean, for real, I don't know anyone who don't like to eat food. We all know that eating too much food and eating the wrong kind of food can make the body sick. You know, cholesterol, arteriosclerosis, uh, colon cancer, all kinds of ailments, the liver, 
all kinds of ailments can come from eating the wrong kinds of food and eating too much. Like I said, we know Ramadan is coming up. I know how I act during the month of Ramadan. I act real foolish. Fast all day. And when it comes to iftar, my plate is piled this high. <laughs> no one I can't eat all of that food. So not only I try to eat it, then I wind up throwing some of it away. Oh, I don't like no wasteful people. We waste a lot of food. Watch what you eat. Small portions of food guarantees tenderness of the heart. It strengthens the intellect, humility, and good. <coughs> Gluttony induces many kinds of evils. You know, it's, that's one of the seven deadlies, ain't it? Gluttony, gluttony. I mean, if you know your Christian stuff, one of the seven deadly, deadly, deadly sins is gluttony. I saw a movie one time where gluttony was represented by an image, great big old monster looking guy, <laughs> sloppy. That's horrible. Excessive eating causes laziness, causes obesity, heart and lung problems. When you fall, you don't feel like praying. Yeah, I'll pray. I'm gonna let, me, let me lay down first. <laughs> uh, so you know after that slot, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> May Allah guide us and protect us from that. And number four, lastly, and then I'm gonna wrap up, y'all. <coughs> lastly, Companionship. <laughs> One of the poisons of the heart is companionship. Pick your companions carefully. Superfluous companions is the chronic disease that causes all evil. The wrong type of companionship influences your behavior, your judgment, and your actions. Many years ago, I was guilty. I hung with the wrong people, almost got me killed, folks. Just being with the wrong people. Anytime you're with the wrong people, if somebody after them, if they come after them, they're going to get you too. Being in the wrong company. The prophet said, you want to know about somebody? Don't ask about them. Ask who they hang with. Uh-huh. Ask who their companions are. Ask who their friends are. That'll tell you much about them. Because, as the law says, I will be there in that shit on it, Jimmy. Yama la ayyan fa'u ma loon wa la la loon. Illa man atalaha bi kawbi sadi. On the day when your money or your children ain't gonna help you one bit. Only the person that brings to Allah a sound heart will be successful. A called in sati. We pray that Allah makes us of those who brings to him a sound heart on the day of judgment. I mean. إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل سيدي محمد كما صليت على سيدي إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدي إبراهيم ناقل يوم الجد اللهم بارك على سيدي محمد وعلى آل سيدي محمد كما باركت على سيدي إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدي Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. It comes to the Salah, inshallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala falah, قد كامت السلاة قد كامت السلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله Pray this a lot.
as though it may be our last, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Al-Rahman, 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 Quire il mondo di Alehi Mola
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alert! Local schools have been closed and outdoor activities should be limited. Pollution-related respiratory illnesses are on the rise, especially among children and the elderly. Please be sure that your children stay inside. Every year, tens of thousands of people die prematurely due to air pollution. Poor air quality costs us millions of dollars in medical expenses, and the productivity of Latin American cities and businesses is diminished. Vehicle emissions represent the most important source of air pollution in Latin American cities. The reduction of air pollution is not an impossible challenge. We need to promote the use of cleaner fuels and vehicles and improve public transportation. The Clean Air Initiative for Latin American Cities, building partnerships for a cleaner and healthier Latin America. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawmiddin, Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka nasta'in, Ihdina surat al-mustaqeen, Surat al-lazina an'abta alayhim, Ghayri al-maqdubi alayhim, Walad nalim. Um, so we begin with reading from the Quran and before we begin we would like to go over the basic rules of grammar for the Arabic students. The Arabic language it, it, it consists of basically three types of words nouns, verbs, and particles. The nouns they name a thing the verb, they indicate an action that has occurred in the past, meaning that it has been completed as we speak, or the action occurs in the present, meaning that the action is going on as we speak, or the action occurs in the future, meaning that, the, that it occurs after we speak. The, uh, the particles, they do not have a direct meaning within themselves until they're used with another noun, with a noun, a verb, or another particle. These are the, this is the basic foundation for words in the Arabic language. So what we want to do is we want to indicate, we're going to read, we'll indicate whether that word is a noun, verb, or a particle, and we will give grammatical rulings for the noun, verb, or the particle. We begin, Subhana, 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 and this is mostly translated as glorify or glory, glory, or and it ends in a fatha, and it's a noun. So, in the language. Basic, the basic rule, the basic fundamental rules, if a noun ends in Dhamma, it is the subject or directly relate, influenced by the subject. Directly related to or influenced by the subject. If the noun ends in Fatha, it's influenced by a verb. If the noun ends in Kasra, it's influenced by a preposition. So this <coughs> word is subhana. Subhana has a fata. And it's the first word in the, in, the, in, the, in the sentence or in the verse here. So we, we say that if the noun is in fata, it's influenced by a verb. But we understand that the verb has been dropped. The verb is not here. This is the first word because we go back. We always go back to find the influence here, but the verb is not mentioned. 
So we, we understand the verb to be there. We understand the verb to be there. So this is subhana. Subhana is to glory, but this is a very difficult word to translate because subhana comes from the word meaning to swim. To swim. <coughs> right? And everything in the creation is moving. Is in movement. It's moving towards a destiny. It's swimming along, following a course designed by God. And when the human being is moving along that this course towards God. See, everything is returning towards God, moving towards God. When the human being is in his or her proper course, then we say supana. This is supana. Swimming along, like the swimmer. Everything is swimming along. So supana, following the course that's designed by God. That's what we're saying. Following the course that's designed by God. Subhana, so we give glory to him. al who? Esra. al is who? And this is a relative pronoun. Who? Um, it's, um, this is the relative pronoun. Who? Esra. Esra comes from Sarah. This is the verb. This is a verb, Sarah. It's from Sarah, yeah. Sarah, Esra. But when it's put in the form of Esra, this is called, this is the fourth form. We have the study guides, and in our study guides, we have all of the forms listed. This is the fourth form. And within the form here, words are formed from this letter to this letter, and all that, it, all that makes up the form of it, it has a meaning within that form. When the letter, then the endings, it gives us the grammatical structure. The grammatical structure. So the form will give us more depth into the meaning of a word. But the grammatical structure gives us more direction in the speech and, and how the speech is going. So here, Esra is in the fourth form and the characteristic. The main characteristic of the fourth form is a fata on the on that comes before the first root letter. And the first root letter will have a sukun on it. That's the main characteristic. So esra. And this fourth form has in its meaning causation. Meaning that the uh, action occurs it's, it's caused it's, it's uh, caused to have happened there's a cause for it to have happened but the the real the true agent that's causing it doesn't do it directly it's not done directly it's done through something else it's causation this is an action by causation and much of the scripture is by causation, by causation. But it has more meaning than the direct cause of it. We have books out now that t gives us the, what occurred during the time of a revelation to Muhammad the prophet. They have uh, chrono, chrono, chronicled the history of Muhammad the prophet and they may give something that happened directly to cause the revelation. But there's a greater cause. There's something that causes in that. There's a greater cause in that action occurring. And, that, and when the prophet gives the revelation it's addressing more than that action that occurred at that moment. It's not limited to the action that occurred at that moment. So here that Esra. So we say, Subhana, glory to him, glory to he who Esra, who caused travel. Caused the travel. Be Abdihi. Be Abdihi. With his or by his or his servant. His servant. So, 
he caused his servant to travel. But this is the one that we're glorifying. God is not direct. We can't see God direct. We don't have the communication with God direct. So it's through causation. And he caused him to travel, his servant. He caused his servant to travel. This is preposition B. And it caused Abd to end in Kesra. And we have said that if a noun ends in Kesra, it's influenced by the preposition. And the preposition is B. And this he is a preposition. This is a pronoun. Attached pronoun meaning his servant. His servant. And Muhammad, this is addressing Muhammad the prophet. And Muhammad the prophet is called his servant, his slave. And this is a high, high position. This is a high standard or position in to have in the world. It's to be a slave of God. See, he is addressing him as his slave. So this is a high status. This is the highest status that man can have is that of slave. And you cannot be a slave of God. You cannot be a servant of God if you're not serving your brother or your sister. How could you be a servant of God if we don't serve each other? So we have to be servants to each other if we're the true servants of God. So this is a high status. This is a high status in the life, in the world. So he causes his servant to travel, Leyland, Leyland. This is a noun. It ends in tenwin feta. And the rule is, if a noun ends in feta, or tenwin feta, it's influenced by a verb. And the verb, if we go back, now we find the verb esra. Esra. So we say he traveled by night. And how is it related to the verb? It's related to the verb as a noun or an adverb. It's a noun or an adverb of time. An adverb of time. So his travel was during the night, at night. And he traveled Men from men, men, men al masjidi. This is from the masjid. Men is a preposition. And al masjidi ends in kasra because it's influenced by a preposition. Because the rule says if a noun ends in kasra, it's influenced by a preposition. So we have a prepositional phrase. And it was saying from the masjid from the masjid and the masjid is the mosque it's the mosque masjid it's the word for mosque or the word for church masjid in the broader sense it's a church, it's a place the masjid is a place where we make sajda we see the word sajda sajda is in here it's a place for sajda. And God has said that his whole, his whole earth is a masjid. His whole earth is a masjid. So if we go to the church and we make sajda in the church, then the church is called a masjid. If we go in our house and we have a place in our house, that we make the prayer, that we make sajda, where we make sajda, then that place in the house is called the masjid. It's the masjid in the house, proper. It's the masjid. The place that we go to pray. So he went, he traveled by night from the masjid, from the mosque, El-Haramah. This is El 
Haram. And this is the sacred. Haram is the sacred. Sacred. Masjid al Haram. Masjid al Haram. And this is the noun. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Al Harami. These, I, I have, have, these letters are so close. Al Harami. Al Harami. See, really, when we're reading, we don't need all of these signs. These signs, these, these letters here, were not here in, before. But if we understand what is being said, if we know what's being said, and we understand what is being said, then we know the marks that would be on the end. We would know the grammatical marks, if we understand. When the Quran was being revealed, it was revealed on the hearts of the, of the people, of the believers, it was, and they memorized it. But if we change this to El Haram, it changes the whole meaning. It'll change the meaning of what we're saying. But we have say Harami, then we know that if it's El Harami, it's describing the masjid. But if we say El Harami, then it's not describing the masjid. It would have to be saying something else. This is what this is the importance of grammar, because the first thing we have to understand when reading the, the Quran, when reading the language, what is it saying? What literally? We want to see literally what is the Quran saying literally before we begin to look at what it means. We have to know what it says first and understand what it's saying first. Then we want to go and look to see, well, what does this mean? So Al-Harami, if when we say Al-Harami, then we know that this is ending in Kasra and we have a noun that's following another noun and it ends in Kasra. And it's the mirror, mirror image of the noun that it follows, meaning this is singular word. The one is following is singular. This has the aleph lamb. It's, it's definitive or definite. And this one is definite. So this word becomes a description of this word. Then the word that it follows. The description comes after. In English, the description comes before. So it's describing it as a sacred, as the sacred mosque. The sacred mosque. That's how the mosque is described. Al-Haram. And Al-Haram, here we have the word Al-Haram, meaning the sacred. The sacred mosque. And this is, we have, uh, we know we're familiar with this word when we, when we say uh, those things that's halal, that's free, open, permissible, and we have those things that are haram. They are sacred. But some of, it would be confusing for some of us because the eating of the pig or the pork or the swine is haram. And are we saying that the pork is sacred? Yes. Yes, it is sacred. How is it sacred? Because we're not to take it out of its form and use it for consumption. We're not to change the form of it and produce it for consumption because it has God created it. God created everything, right? So God created the pig. And God has told us, has indicated to us, that we're not to eat it. If we do, we have taken it out of its form of sacredness and have disobeyed God. Only God can give permissible for the use of things in his creation. Everything God has created, he has made sacred. Fire, isn't it sacred to us? Yes, fire is sacred. But the hellfire, we avoid. But the fire...